Well hello again folks, uh, today I'm going to be talking about band saws and in particular this particular band saw which is my Electra Beckham BAS316G. Now it's not a bad band saw, uh, works fine except for one thing, the blade guides here uh, are, got, are prone to falling apart which is exactly what's happened to this. In a moment I'll show you in detail but you can see uh, that I have tried to bodge it over the last few years by bolting it together with things but it's never successful. What's happened is that the actual guides, both the bottom one underneath which I'll show you a bit later and this top one here, uh, they're made of a sort of a, a cast alloy and, and they sort of go rotten and it just falls apart, it literally falls apart in front of your eyes basically. And I've held it all together with this concoction of little brass plates that I, I fitted on to hold it together, but now I, I realise that it, it's a, it needs replacing. Now the thing is you cannot buy the original guides. Now why I'm doing this video is that I've now searched the internet and I found a company that sells a, a, a replacement guide set for this to fit this particular saw and what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the guide set itself, what you get and I'm going to take this saw apart and show you how to fit it on just in case there's anybody else that's got the same problem and I'm sure there's quite a few looking on you know the number of people that have complained about it um, I'm sure there's a few and it might help them when if they've got the same problem to do the job so that's what I'm going to do so without messing about any further let's get on with it the first thing I'm going to do is show the actual kit that you get that you order this is the kit you get I ordered it from a company called Paratools and I will put their details and a link in the description of the video for you in case there's anybody wants to order one. They've got a metal bracket here and then you've got the a new guide rail. This is the pit piece that the, um, the actual blade guides fit on and you get the blade guides themselves and, and some nuts and bolts and things. Now this will be the upper blade guide and this will be the lower blade guide. Now you also get a metal plate and the reason for that I believe is it, it's a drilling guide. You put that, I'll, I'll come to this a bit later on in the video, but you put this on the saw and it directs you where to drill the hole. But reading the instructions, it does say there's a special sheet on the front and it says don't, you, don't use it. I think they've discovered that it doesn't work on all of these particular models. so. <laughs> actually that's superfluous to requirements but uh, I thought I'd mention it anyway uh, these are the guys I'm just showing a little bit of detail these look very well made they're alloy and obviously multi adjustable you've got allen screws on the back here and what it is when you want to adjust the actual uh, ball bearings onto the blade you just loosen that off you see and this this slides in and out like this which enables you to adjust it to the blade and then the same with this one at the back I presume this is the same, you can undo this screw here and this is the thrust bearing at the back which this is the top guide obviously and uh, you've got two ball bearings which again are adjustable here uh, so you can slide them in and out on a little rod and this is the rear rear one here, thrust bearing and that again moves in and out and also you've got movement on here where this fits on here and then obviously you can move the whole thing that way if you wish see that piece will slide up in there like that look hope you can see this and then that will fit on there like so and then you've got your washer and your nut locking nut and you see that's now fitted on the bottom of the, the unit and uh, this, this will actually move as well as the actual bearing itself so that will move along so that's that piece what I'm going to do I'll take the table off uh, and the blade obviously and then I'll sh we can have a proper look at the actual guide underneath the table before I actually do any work. Just loosen these two screws off here and open the door and do the same at the bottom. We'll take the little tray out, the collection tray that collects the sawdust and stuff and put that out of the way. Now you see the blade itself proper um, what I'll do, I'll take the blade off first and then I'll take the tape off. So all you've got to do really is just loosen the tension so the blade's loose hopefully and then you should be able to slide it out. When you're doing this mind, you, mind your fingers because they can be very sharp these blades. You've got to take this actual front piece off to get the blade out proper. So you just undo the wing nuts underneath 
that piece comes off like that you see, just put that out of the way and then we can remove the blade and put the blade somewhere safe, you don't want to cut your fingers on it, and we'll put that over there. You'll notice that the insert in the table is actually made of wood, plywood, because I manufactured it myself, because the original one snapped, and if you look at the original, you can see why it's useless, it's got the slot for the blade and two holes drilled in the top for the sawdust, and of course it's a weak point, because the only part that holds it together is those little bridges across the two holes. Now we're going to take the table off, be careful, these tables are really heavy, so go around this side, and underneath there's a, a big uh, a knob that you can turn to loosen this so you can adjust it. Just loosen that off. Uh, now I'd recommend that uh, you take the two top bolts at the back off first because they're the most difficult to get at. And then once you've done that you can push the table back over so to speak and do the front bolts without the heavy weight of it falling down. Uh, 13 mm spanner and there's, there's two heavy bolts at the back. Be careful this table is really really heavy. It's cast iron, it's a well, it is a well made table. It's a pity they didn't make the blade guides of the same quality, isn't it? Because uh, I wouldn't have this problem. I can now use the socket wrench on the front two, two bolts. That one. Right, as I say, be careful with this. Now you can just lift this off and put it in a safe place, but it's really, really heavy. Right, now you can see the lower blade guide down here. And right, here's the top blade guide. Uh, I will take it off in a minute and you can see it in more detail. Right, so now the first thing to do is to take the pulley wheel off, the top pulley. I don't think I need to remove the bottom one, that's perfectly alright. So I've been, there's just a single circlip holds it on. So I've got some circlip pliers here. Uh, you can do it with long nose pliers or fiddle it out if you haven't got any of these. So it's not the end of the world. These make it easier but you don't have to have them. Just be careful it doesn't fly off in your face and put the circlip somewhere safe because you don't want to lose that do you? We'll put that over there and then it's a simple matter of just pulling the pulley off and the wheel will come out. <laughs> the wheel will come out, there you go. So there's the actual pulley wheel off so we'll put that over there at the way. Right so now we've got the pulley wheel off now it's a question of taking this piece out which looks a bit of a fiddle to me. Uh, there's a, there's a, a knob, adjusting knob on this side which I'm going to take off now hopefully. Oh dear, it's screwed into a nut, which is going to make it rather awkward, I think. Oh no, it's not, it's a bolt. It's just a knob with a bolt sticking through, so that, that should be alright. So we'll put that over there, look. So I've got bits over that side and bits over that side, so I'm going to, I'm going to get lost. And then I've got to take this off, and it just pulls off like that. And uh, I should be able to uh, wriggle this through, but it, it's a bit of a fiddle by the looks of things. Right, I know what it is, There's a, the bolts holding it in, the actual bolt that goes through is stopping it from, from going down. So to get this out, what I'm going to do, because there's a bolt inside here, which is preventing this from coming out, I'm going to remove these two screws here, which I presume are self-tappers, and hopefully I should be able to take the little plate off, yeah, it's loose already, look, I'm going to take those off, hopefully I should be able to take the bolt out through the top, and then this will pull out a lot easier. You could probably fiddle about, but this is probably the easiest way. Right, there we go. See, there's the bolt with a little plate on it. Now, with that out, it should give it more free movement, so I ought to be able to get this out now. Fiddle around in it. It's, it is very tight. Uh, I think the main problem, oh, there we go, it's that little piece there, look. So we've got that out, so we'll now take that over the bench and we can have a proper look at the upper bearings. Right, I've got the two guys on the bench, so you can compare the two. Uh, obviously this is the new one here, with the new guy temporarily fitted on, and this is the old one, as you can see my concocted bodge-up arrangement. Um, the difference, the main difference is that because the new one is shallower, it does mean that you get about three quarters of an inch extra cutting height on the saw, which is a plus point actually. Uh, what I'll do, I'll take this off and then I'll just show you in detail what I've done to it uh, in case anybody wants to see how you can bodge it up if it does break and you haven't got, you can't get one of these. This is just a bodge I did to get it working again because uh, I needed to do some sawing uh, before I realised I could buy the new, the new type that I've got that I'm going to fit today. Uh, now if you look at that there, that's what it should look like when it's new and that looks fine doesn't it? But in actual fact, that's how I buy super glue, would you believe? I super glued it together, not because it will make it strong enough to use, but so that I could make a bracket up that would fit it, you see. So this is actually, you can see across the top there's a crack there, and if I do that it might, there you are. That's, that didn't just break, that was broken before, and I super glued it. But you can see that's what happened. This, 
metal, which is a sort of cast alloy substance, it's awful and it just crumbles up. You know, you can see there's a, a fault in it there as well. And it's broken here and it's broken here. And the same on the top one, it's actually useless. Right, now I just thought I'd show you the lower blade guide and compare it with the new one. This is the original one and as you can see, it, this is where it's broken away on the front here. Uh, the, the aluminium or whatever it is, the alloy has just snapped off its cast like the other one. And normally what happens is there's a, an allen screw in there, look, which you adjust to bring this little finger in and out to touch the blade down here. And you'll notice on this side, this is all broken away. And so I've had to, I use this 13 amp electrical plug pin and I drilled a hole and made a slot in it and put a self tapper so I could adjust that. So that got round that, but then round the back here, it snapped off here with the little adjusting knob on there that adjusts this uh, bit guide bearing in and out. That snapped off as well, so that was that. So I put some washers and a bearing under there to, to, to move it out so that I would, I would at least be able to bring that forward enough to hit the back of the blade. Uh, so that's the original, and this as you can see is the replacement birch, and you can see it's a much better, a much better engineered job than the original. Um, it's proper solid aluminium with adjustable ball bearings and you've got three ball bearings rather than the the little guides metal guides uh, pins these are actual ball bearings and you've got a thrust one on the back and it's fully adjustable so that's the lower one and it's much better than the original one obviously right i'm now going to fit the guide into the saw the top guide uh, we do that first and then we can put the blade on and find the position for the lower glide. So what you've got to do is pack this up through here. I've taken the bolt nut out first because I can put that in afterwards, it makes it easier. You've got to remember this little protective slide goes in, but it fits in like that between this piece here and slides into this slot in here. So you've got to sort of offer it up like this and, and slide that piece in at the same time, like so. Hopefully that's it, that's it, that's in the right position. Now I'm going to drop the bolt down through the top here. Hopefully that will go into the right position. And then I'm going to poke it through that little hole there. There's the bolt, there it goes. Uh, that wasn't too bad, was it? That was quite simple actually. And then just pop the knob on the end there. Oh, butterfingers. Screw that on there. Right, and that's that slider piece, that's actually that piece fitted in lock. And then you can see it will slide up and down accordingly. So that's that done. This piece has to fit on here, but the original hole is in the wrong position, so you've got to drill a new hole for it. And the instructions with using the template is no good, it doesn't necessarily work correctly. And so I've got to work out exactly where to put it. So the easiest way to do that is to put the blade on and get it in the right position, and now I can offer this up and mark where I'm going to drill my hole. So the next job to do is to put the pulley back on and then I can get the blade on and we can find the position for that. So I'll do that now. So that's the top pulley on. Uh, now having done that, I can just put the, put the new blade on and adjust that up roughly and then I can find the position of the lower guide. So we'll pop that back up for a moment. So what I've got to do now is I've got to find the position for this to be on and then mark it so I can drill the hole to accommodate this. Now there is some movement. You can move this that way and that way and you can move it on the bolt that way and that way. So And also this moves in and out. So it, it's not absolutely critical but I'd like to get it as near as possible. Um, so it gives you some adjustment and you want the ball bearings behind the teeth. But that, that bit of the adjustment isn't so important as this, getting it this way or that. And I think that's about right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark that with my pencil. So I'm going to get a centre punch and mark it first. This is just an automatic centre punch, but you can use a, an ordinary one with a hammer if you want. I'll get that to go. Okay, so I've marked the hole. I'm going to drill it initially with a, a small bit, about a three mil bit, and then I shall um, revert to a six mil bit. Okay, for this, I think. Okay, right, that's the six mil hole drill. This is a little plate that you need to replace because the original one's a bit too wide. So I'll pop the bolt up through underneath there. And then this piece will fit on the top. Hopefully. Okay. 
Now you want this as square as possible with the saw. Just a matter of putting the bottom guide on top of there like that, look. Right, now the bolt that they supplied for this, I fitted in as you can see, to me it seems far too long for the job in hand, so I'm going to take it out again and I'm going to use the original one because I think that'll be plenty long enough. And the problem with this is if you had to take it off again, it's going to take you half a day to undo it because the socket, the socket um, won't fit on it far enough to undo it quickly, so I'm going to try the original bolt rather than the one that they've sent because I think that's far too long but I might be wrong you see now that's going to go on there look there's loads of room on there for a nut and bolt you don't need that great long bolt on there it's just a nuisance so right that's that little plate in place now and, and this guide slides on that you see so just pop that on there see that's perfectly all right that's plenty long enough because you've got to adjust it every so often anyway to get it right I'm just going to put it roughly the right position where it should be, but there is some adjustment with the bearing here. So actually, that should be in about the right position now. Right, so we've got both the guides fitted on there in place. All that remains to do is just do a quick adjustment. I've left the little blade guard off the front so you can see better. So um, the, the blade is in the right position on the pulleys, uh, which is in the centre and everything seems free moving, the blade is about the right tension, about a quarter of an inch deflection so it's just a question of adjusting these guides up to the blade. Now what you ideally you want them so they just kiss the blade you don't want them to press on the blade and you don't if you can possibly do it, it it just needs to just kiss the edge of the blade so that it barely touches it and do the same with both sides but make sure the blade's central if you're not sure, get a, a little thin bit of paper, like a cigarette paper or something, and pop between the bearing and the blade, and then tighten up, and then remove the paper, and that should give you about the right, the right distance. I think that's about right, so I'm going to tighten those two up there. Now, this is the back bearing. That Again, that needs to just kiss the back of the blade. You don't want it to press the blade and force the blade forward, and you don't want it right back so that it doesn't support the blade. So it needs to just kiss the blade, and then move away slightly if you can. Ideally, it shouldn't really touch it until you put pressure on it. So I think that's about right. All I've got to do now, that's finished in there. All that's finished. The bottom's finished. Nothing more to do there. Guys are fitted. It's now just a question really of putting the table back on and then checking that it works all right. So I'll do that now. I won't show you all the process of putting the table on because I showed you taking it off. So I'll just put it back on and then I'll come back when it's on and show you it working. If it works, that is. Right, the whole thing is now assembled, both the blade guides are fitted, there's a new blade on there. Uh, basically all it's got to do now is to switch it on, like the blue touch paper so to speak, and see if everything works fine. So here we go, just try a bit of cross cutting first. Nice new blade, makes all the difference. We'll try it the other way, take that piece off. Well, I think you'll agree that's a, a very worthwhile job done. Um, so basically, that's about it, folks. I think you'll agree it's quite a good job. It's a good quality kit, and fair play to the people who've designed it. It does a good job. And uh, as I say, I will put a link to the place I bought it from in the description. So if you've got one of these saws, and you've got this problem, and I'm pretty sure you will have if it's the same type as mine, uh, it's a well worth way of putting it right again. For the cost so um, anyway thanks very much for watching sorry it's been a bit mixed up this video it's quite hard to film it actually with all the different camera positions and uh, hopefully i'll see you in the next video bye for now